Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Hello everyone and welcome to the SO TV podcast from Marvel's Agents of Shield. Now this is season five, episode seven. Together or not at all, I am your host, Jacob. And who do I have with me today? Same people. Same people. Same people. <laughs> I wasn't here last week, but we're not yeah. going anywhere. <clears throat> okay. We know from last week Fitz finally met up with well, some of the team anyway, of uh, at least you know, um his lady and um Daisy. Um, oh, wow, like he, I was about to call her Sky. Holy shit. Oh, still on that? See, it's been, you know, three it's seasons. Same, no, three or four seasons. We need to... Same thing. You know, I haven't, I haven't had that urge in a while. Go on, carry on. No, I do it sometimes, too. Um, but, um, so Fitz is telling people, hey, like, we gotta get out of here. I got a spaceship. Oh, wait, no, it blew up. Oh, no, wait. Uh, oops. Daisy. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but um, I, I do like that um, we have um, Cassius and uh, his brother. Um, I, I, lo- I love brother dynamics. And I just have the feeling that one of them is going to kill the other one. <laughs> of course. It's probably good. The older one is probably going to die. Um, I just have the feeling. Um, but, you know, that works to um, the hero's advantage. Because, um, you know, they're going to probably murder each other before they murder, um, you know, the team. <clears throat> I thought Cassius yeah, think... was the older one. Is he? I thought he was the older one. Because, cause, yeah, because remember they said, oh, but th- your father gave his business to your younger brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know why, but I get the feeling that he, I get the feeling that he's younger. You know, it, that may or may not be the case, but it just oh. seems like he's the younger one. Yeah, he know. does. I think, it's, just, I think does. it's their dynamic. It's the dynamic. They Well, if you saw my sister and I together, you'd think my sister's older. A lot of people think my sister's older than me, but I'm two years older than her. It's mm-hmm. just yeah. how... I mean, sometimes when siblings are close in age that like that, they tend to switch roles. Yeah, it's, it could be hard to tell, mm-hmm. depending on which one has a baby face or, you know... That. They, they thought me and my brother were twins when we were in college together. Three years apart. <laughs> yeah, see, when you're that close, sometimes you, your roles get switched. You, you switch roles. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, when I read, you know, things about first and second children, I'm always relating more to the second child. <laughs> I'm like, no, that sounds like my sister. But, yeah, no, I think he was, I think he's the oldest. I think that's why he took, he took it so hard. Yeah. That his dad gave the business to his brother. Well, we learned a bit about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they're two different. They're like two different people. It's like Cassius is more the the thinker. He he thinks yes. about things. He's not he's not the military man. He's not the he's he's ruthless and he will kill. But he's he'd rather not get blood on his hands. He'd rather he's do the, nail. the political uh, side mm-hmm. of things. Uh, yeah. yeah, and his brother was the total opposite. Mm-hmm. As you can see, he's just like, I'm sending my man to get him. Yeah. Who, uh, I thought his guy was super cool. Like, his design, he looked awesome. His knives were really intimidating. And uh, so I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be, like, really tense and epic. And then he gets to the room with with uh, uh, Daisy and Fitzsimmons and just starts opening fire on the life support system. And I'm just like you instantly became a fucking dumbass. <laughs> well, he, he's good at he's he's good at machine guns and, and weapons and stuff. Not so good at the smarts part. <laughs> Obviously not cuz if he would have known he would have known he would have saw her killing him long before he maybe, actually Maybe did. he was just having an off day. Maybe he had to go to the bathroom <laughs> or something. I don't know. He was constipated. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was a long flight. <laughs> um, um, but let's see. But we have um back down on the surface. We have May, who is awesome. And you know, May has just been in the shit end of the stick. You know, every single season, um, 
She's down there. We got the roaches, well, the xenomorphs, as I call them, because that's basically what they are. Um, and I, I fully believe that May would just rip its head off, even with her fucked up leg. Um, but no, we have, um, what's his name? The guy who's Cole. pretending to be a Kree, who's not a Kree. Um, oh. Um, oh, God. What's hey, Enoch. Enoch. Enoch, that's it. I was like, it's some weird It's a biblical kinda... name. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a weird name. Yeah, we have Enoch, um, who I'm pretty sure I've heard that name somewhere on Doctor Who, but um, we have Enoch uh, killing the roach just by stabbing him. He's, apparently he's killed like you know a bunch of these things just following her. Um, <clears throat> they don't want him. Yeah, uh, but he said he doesn't have tender insides, he says. Yeah. Whatever that means. I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck he is. Well, he said exactly what he was, and then I forgot to look it up like a dumbass. Um, yeah. I don't know what that... I know, I know he said it, I just don't know what it is. So. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he's... He can... He can morph into whatever he wants. But he seems like he's becoming a little more cool. He's like... He's, he's acting like... He's being more relatable. Maybe all those years up on the ship, maybe he read some books and stuff, and he's like being a little more, a little more human, I guess you want to yeah. say. Did we get the info? Yeah. Oh, so um. He's a sorry. He's a chron chronicom. Chronicom. Uh. They're an advanced race. Uh. A lot of stuff I. I'll finish reading this. I'll get back to you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about. So let's talk about um, uh, Yo Yo Mac and um, Coulson. Yes. Um, let's see. They're talk. They're oh, and, and Flint. Flint is there. Flint with his new powers. And then he's wondering where Tess is. And then that just reminded me how fucking upset I was last episode. Yeah. Right. Because um, I really liked her. Me too. I. Uh, I kind of liked her. I don't know. When I thought I, I knew it was going to happen. And I saw it, and when it happened, I'm just like, oh, okay, well, yeah, okay, that happened. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't, you know, shed any tears over it or anything. Well, I didn't cry about it, but I did like her. I thought she was a cool character. Um, but, um, but Flint's really upset, and then Mac gives the whole with great power comes great responsibility speech thing, which I'm um, actually, a lot of people say that wrong. That's actually not how the quote goes. Um, so, and I, I, I like I bring this up because um, Flint shows um, shows the example of what the original line was. The original line is, "With great power, must also come with great responsibility." And the difference is, if you say "With great power comes great responsibility," that means it feels like you are it, it's saying you are obligated to use these powers for good and. Mm -hmm. With the original line saying, with great power must also come with great responsibility, it's implying that you have the choice to use the powers however you want. And Mac is trying to tell him, you can use these powers to protect people. And Flint is kind of not, he's kind of iffy on the whole thing. Um, well, he doesn't know if he could actually control these powers yet. He's kind of like... But if I fuck up, either I'm going to die or more people are going to die. Mm -hmm. So I can see why he'd be hesitant to even take these. But, you know, at the same time, he took the bull's ball of horns and rock to the eye. Very David and Goliath. A very David and Goliath scene there. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine that wasn't intentional. Right. And I love that they search his pockets and take out the rocks and I'm like, smart kid. Good job. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think um, what's the, terrakinesis, I think it's what it's called. I think that's what his powers are. Yeah, that uh, sounds about right. And terra meaning the earth, and the earth is just a bunch of rocks, and the rocks He's are a rock are, bender! Um, Honestly, an, yeah, an earth, earth bender. bender. Honestly, from... Uh, but it, it actually doesn't seem like he can manipulate the shape of an existing rock. It seems like he can he can lift rocks and assemble them like a puzzle almost yeah well, we don't know yet we don't You're know right. the extent we don't, of, we don't know the extent of his abilities because sometimes 
some of these abilities they show a little bit at time, but then the more you have and the more you grow. I mean, with like um, with Daisy, we knew that she could, you know, quake things, but we didn't know that she could actually feel the vibrations of living things and stuff. And so we don't know exactly. We, I mean, he's only had his powers for what maybe a day and a half. And maybe days. he can make rocks float and ride on them, and it's like a surfboard. Um, like Terra from the Teen Titans. Yeah, there we go. I thought about that I, last week, but didn't. Bring I wasn't it up. even thinking about that. That's really that's actually a really good um, comparison. I was thinking last Airbender, you know. Yeah. That too. No, that too. Definitely. Um, I, I'm. I want to see because with with um, when you get powers, you know, you there's raw power, but when you start like channeling it and practicing you can realize you could do you know a bunch of other cool things um because we've seen with daisy's powers you know before when she started she just you know broke shit yeah. um including her own arms you know <laughs> but now she can fly thankfully she doesn't do that anymore break her own arms that is know, right? oh yeah um which which makes me wonder can she break the arms of other people oh of course well so she knows how to well she knows how to reverb yeah, she can you know, make a person explode if she really wanted to. Why haven't we seen that yet? Because they're want shield. To. They're righteous. They don't <laughs> kill people. Yeah, I guess. But I, I kind of want to see that. But they threaten to kill Deet because he's being an asshole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, they, I I don't know if this is like really good writing where they're making they're just making us hate him. No. And then see, it's going to be a whole turnaround. Uh, no, be, it's not... This, he's he's not being written well is the problem I think because, but I don't know if that's like secretly good writing though. But it, no 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 it's not because they're showing their hand. They want him to be this character that's an asshole, but we'll learn to love him. But he's still an asshole, and we don't love him. So oh. why do you gotta do this to cute guys? Seriously, I saw a thing that says why do all the villains have to be cute? And I don't think he's I, it's cute. true. I think he's really cute. I think he looks kind of... It looks like he doesn't shower. I didn't say he's handsome. I think he's cute. There's a difference. He's I mean, this guy... He looks gross to me. <laughs> he looks gross to me. <laughs> yeah, he's, he doesn't do it for me. No. I, think I would he looks say like he's not my type, but I really don't have a type. I like what I like. I like fits. Um, being all badass. Um, I've been doing and then, push-ups. Uh, I'm in the double I've been doing digits. push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I like double because double digits could mean he's doing 20 <laughs> or 10 uh, or 10 yeah no exactly 10 could be 10 I was giving him the benefit of the doubt that's a little higher than 10 I love the Simmons is like I mean Sky or Daisy was like I kind of like the whole body under thing going on she's like I, I, I like the cardigans <laughs> I was like you guys can okay, you mix them I bet I bet she's serious. She secretly likes the bad boy part of her. I bet she's a she part of her that's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this part a little bit. It's different. But that wasn't. Yeah, it, it's different, but like, it's not the fits that. Because, um, like, even fits from season one to season two is like drastically different, but you, it, it's still. Yeah. It's still him, um, you know, and he still wore his cardigans and, you know, whatever else. Yeah. And, you know, he really, he started um, coming into his own, I want to say season three. Um, but now I think watching him from season one all the way up to now, there's a bit of that old fit still in him of, you know, that, you know, the, you know, wit of, his wit is still there. Um, and he's definitely still very compassionate and he cares about, you know, everyone on this team, but he's been hardened. Mm -hmm. He knows how to bring that, kind of control the guy that he was in the main frame. Yeah. In the frame. Yes. He, because he, he did show a little bit of that when he was pretending to be this ruthless bounty hunter type guy. So. Definitely, yeah. I find it interesting that he retained the memories from the framework, but they weren't real. Yeah. Mm -mm. But I mean, well, he, he he's still he still fits. Like he's got the memories of of you know, 
growing up and being the good guy and, and having the morals he has now, but then he also remembers being evil and is he's like, oh no. But he's like using it almost to his advantage in this point in this episode. He's using it using the that aspect of himself that he never thought he had. But now that he knows he has, he's like, you know, I can use this for good kind of thing. Yeah, and this could this code go to help me. That's why when he wakes when Enoch wakes him up and uh, Enoch says, Do you think you can pose as a very evil man? And Fitz was like, Yeah, I think I can manage that. That's why that that line just mm-hmm. felt so uh, yeah. you know, weighted because he he can. And I think he it took him a while, a while to realize, you know, he <sighs> He can still be good. He doesn't have to completely block that side of himself off because it is a part of you no matter what. And if, I mean, it's a part of him he, he's good to know. If you get to know it, then chances are you'll be able to, like he did, control it kind of. And he's had how many years to think about it in cryogenesis. So, you know. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't think while you're in cryosleep. Well, maybe you dream and, you know, your subconscious thinks about it for mm-hmm. you. I don't, I don't know how it works. I was actually I just thinking, oh, you know, they should uh, uh, do something about that with Bucky. And then I immediately was like, no, that would break my heart. Please don't ever do that. <laughs> Please don't ever give me an answer to that. But the fact that he's using it for good is yeah. kind of a, a telltale sign of who Fitz is. Yeah. And I think out of all the characters, Fitz has developed the most. Um Aside from maybe, um, Daisy. Aside from maybe Daisy, aside from maybe Daisy, Simmons. but I feel like the younger characters definitely developed the most. Well, I think it's because they are younger, yeah. and they, you know, I definitely with um with Coulson, like you know, Coulson. I mean, he, I mean, like, I don't know how many times he died, but you know, clearly that changes somebody. I think he just doesn't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, I just um, he's like probably. whatever. I give up at this point. Whatever. If I die, I die. I'm not even worried about it. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's also. I mean, as as the director of both, you know, Shield and of Shield, um, we're a play right there. Um, he, Coulson, feels like. Is it, I don't know if this is just me, but I feel like they're setting him up to like permanently die. Mm. Am I the only one who's thinking? I don't that? know if they would do that. I don't I, know. Well, I was just gonna say that in this season, he is the least interesting of the team. He is, and it's worrying me. Yeah, like I didn't notice this until um, I was watching um, the last episode, um, because like I, I I kept I kept thinking to myself like oh I like I really love Fitz I really love Fitz this season like I mean I've always loved Fitz, like I really love this season like I really love Daisy I really love Yo Yo and like oh oh yeah Coulson's still here yeah yeah and I mean the last two episodes I mean one of them was uh, completely uh, Fitz but uh, even the other one like his part was very small he hardly had any speaking lines and in this episode when he started talking I was like oh yeah Coulson's here too that's right. Uh, but he was right you know they're they're in a room full of scientists and trained you know people that couldn't take the way out <laughs> but and I, uh, I don't know maybe they're just putting him on the background because of all the other times shield has been more focused on him like the earlier shields and now they're given they're given time to the other ones which you know tv shows have been known to do just kind of switch it up a little bit, switch the order. Who, who's going to be a bit focused a little bit more? Mm-hmm. And you know, in showing that these youngsters can take care of themselves is a, actually a blown bonus. A little plus. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, we did get mention of gravitonium again. Oh yes. my god! In a way back. Yes, yes. It's Y'all what's keeping that? the fucking station afloat. And so, do y'all remember back in season one with the doctor and the hand thingy and the rawr, rawr, that cliffhanger that went nowhere? Remember that? Yep. Is that gonna come back? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Are we gonna? Because that was like one of like the only storylines that did not get picked back up. Mm-mm. Oh shit! I don't know, maybe what we'll if that's figure what out the planet apart. Oh. Maybe, maybe we'll figure it. Maybe we'll get an idea. Because I mean, they did mention it, and then we're now on the surface of the Earth. Um, maybe 
We'll get some kind of backstory. Yeah, because he was... Last we saw, the guy who was... The Gravitonium guy was locked in... What was that facility called? The Iceberg? Uh, the fridge. Something like that. The fridge, yeah. yeah. The fridge. Yeah, the fridge. Um, yeah. It was deep. It was deep. It was beyond yeah. where the normal... They, was, they like, buried him deep down. He's, yeah, so he's what deep. happened to him? Yeah, exactly. I don't know, because I remember the fridge was got broken into it by a uh, Sir Cy- Psycho Man. And, uh, but I don't think they got down as far as where that one was. I, I remember someone going to the fridge and they were like taking inventory of who was still there. And I think Gravitonium guy was still there. Mm-hmm. Cause he, they got him deep. I think they had him like buried, buried. Yeah. He was deeper than any of the other ones because I think they knew, they know how whole, <laughs> how volatile that could be. At this point in time, because they didn't know exactly what it is or what it does, yeah. they just they they knew about. They don't know if it will, you know. I mean, now we know it has a person in it, so it's kind of alive. So <laughs> it's not exactly the safest thing in the world. No. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have we have Ball Lady. I still don't know her name. Um, who uh, I don't know. For some reason, I thought she died. Uh, no, she was in the pit, and uh, Fitz shot her with the icer. And I think I, I think I forgot that it was an icer. Yeah. I think he just shot her in the head. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was hoping. Well, and I wouldn't be fine if she was dead. But. I loved how that played out because I, I was assuming that she'd be upset with Cassius for, uh, mm-hmm. you know, kind of feeding her to the wolves, so to speak. Um, but she, de- like, delivers his brother to him, like, sets him up for Cassius to stab him in the back, and then she's Literally. just smiling the whole time, and I'm just like, you two are perfect for each other. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. I know she annoys me. Um, I, I like her and him. I think they are awesome. It's very. It's a very interesting dynamic. I I like I like I like him. I don't know if I like her. I'm not. I, maybe she'll grow on me. Um, but I think um, when it comes to villains on this show, I am liking I am liking the Cree as a whole as villains. Um, because we saw them in season. Three. Um, yes. Well, our, no, actually, we saw the first one in season uh, one. It was dead, but we saw one in season two, and then when those two um, like warrior Kree came down in season three, like I was really excited because mm-hmm. like we were getting um, like we were getting like a glimpse into um, you know the, the Kree and like their society and like you know what they were all about, and like now that we're going. Now that we're seeing um, them as a whole and like how they work and like how well how this society and this uh, universe works, yeah, um, right. I'm really interested. Um, <clears throat> so, so I am liking Cassius, um as a villain anyway. Ball Lady, I'm not so sure about. Um, and I'm She's and I'm, really I'm waiting. I think there's yeah. equal opportunities that she will help Cassius do like crazy things and also. A- equal chance she will just stab him in the back or well put a ball through him <laughs> i i want to say that she's in love with him as capable of love as two sociopaths can be Maybe i think so. she's in love with him I and think, i think that sure? in a way that he kind of does too and i think they're they're closer than we think well yeah because there's this she doesn't have many lines and he <laughs> understands what she wants to tell him without having to do anything but look at him. Mm-hmm. And I at first thought she was a little psychic. Mm-hmm. She might still be, but I think that's less what? likely now. Yeah. But I just think they've known each other for some, but no, there there's something going on with those two. Yeah. I'm sure I'm and sure because, they, and because at the very least. State, and because of their station, they can't be public about it. Does that make sense? Because yeah. they, I know 
I know Cree really revolve around the whole hierarchy and the ladder the, system. I, I yeah, I think I think the Cree, the, from the way it looks, um, I think the Cree um, live in an aristocracy, um, which I don't I didn't expect from the Cree, but uh, I don't know. I, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I think to them, inhumans are just like you know, at the bottom of the food chain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is which is kind of stupid because they're they can kick your ass, but. I guess you guys got things, you know, under control because, you know, the three Inhumans that you do have on the ship, you know, they're still on the ship, you know, prisoner. I do like when they were talking to Flint about, he's like, well, I could have been, you know, could have lived a better life and the people here could have lived, but lived a better life. And then they told him straight out the truth. They're like, no, they sell you and nothing happens to the people down here. They just, they, and then you're a slave and he, you know, and it's like, yeah, dude. I'm just waiting for them to figure out how to remove Daisy's inhibitor. Yeah, that's because they got the earworm out of out of. Yeah, the... yeah I was I got... very shocked with how easily Fitz removed that. Well, he it was like he took like little uh, like little tongs, right? Yeah, and just jammed them in there. Yep. Like I don't think that's I don't I don't think your ear canal is that big. Um. It was probably they probably cut into her ear and yeah. inserted that alongside the ear canal is what I would assume. Uh, so it's probably why she was bleeding so profusely out of her ear when he pulled it out. She's like, I, I, can we just stay still? You know, motion sick. <laughs> She's like, I've never been this motion sick before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah it, thank God you didn't hit brain. Hmm. I don't think it meant to go that far. I don't think it was in that far. So. That that like but this... that could have gone so wrong. Oh, of course it could have. Okay. That's why I was really shocked he was just going in there. I'm like, okay. Yeah. okay. Am, am I the only one that thought that um, the, was it Simmons actually slit, slit his throat and not his cheek? It looked like the throat. I watched it three times. It looked yeah. like the throat. But it was. She split his throat. How can he still? Mm, I don't well, know, I was assuming that he, you know, he his throat got slit, but not enough to like do. Yeah, I damage. thought maybe. Yeah, yeah, but it but was, it was across cheek. his cheek. I was like, that does not look like uh -uh. what was shown. No, I don't know. Maybe he has some kind of protection thing on his neck that no one sees. I like how right. uh, vain he is. Where he's just like, just didn't scar too bad. And then he, you know, the next scene, he's got the makeup on over it again. <laughs> he's so vain. I love it. Yeah, this is, he yeah, really is. I mean, the villains in these, these episodes have been like really good, mm -hmm. which is, you know, which is good because we've had some really crappy villains in the oh, past yeah. that are just like, eh, yeah. But at the same time, you kind of wonder what made him this way. And I'm, if I had it, he has daddy issues. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It, clearly his father didn't trust him um, to inherit the Empire, so he set him up to be killed by his own generals. Well, because, I mean, I think it's because, like, he isn't the the war type. He yeah. isn't the military type. He's the more intellectual type, the more psyche. The ones you should be scared of. Um those are the ones you should be scared of. The psychi you know, all yeah. psychological people, those are the ones are gonna fuck you up mm -hmm. because you know, they don't do it right away. They suffer, they let you suffer and they wait and they have patience and they can wait things out. And we saw he he's been waiting mm -hmm. for this opportunity. He's been waiting and waiting and he's patient. But so yeah, and his like he told his brother, You'll underestimate me. You underestimate people. Straight out. And yeah. His brother did. And this, just like seeing this, uh, seeing Cassius in this uh, uh, society of Cree, mm -hmm. makes me wish we saw Ronan in the context oh. of the Cree Empire. Because Ronan's such a fascinating character. But he was an Ronin. outlier also. Yeah. And I would have just Ronin loved to see very... him interact with the Korean Empire. Yeah, I think Ronan was Ronan was very religious. Oh, and yeah. I think those I think those are very that was very like traditional 
um, Cree, where these Cree um, seem like, you know, this is like, this seems like, you know, a, a new age of Cree. Um, so maybe they forgot, you know, about how they used to do things, or like maybe they just don't care. I think it's that they don't care. Um, because the, the one, like, sentence you get in Guardians of the Galaxy, um, from the ambassador of the Kree Empire was, we don't associate with Ronan, he's a crazy person. So, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think, I, I want to see, because we, we know, we, we have Blue Kree, and those are the Kree that we're most familiar with, but those, a lot of people um, don't realize that those pink aliens that we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, those are also Kree. Um, yes. Yes. They are pink Cree. I want to know how they fit into all this. Mm -hmm. Are they just you know? Are they a separate society? Or are they? We, we see them uh, as slaves to exactly, the collectors. Yeah. Or are they slaves in this society as well? I find that interesting. Like, if that's would, the case. Yeah, I would imagine that's, that because that's a nice that's a nice metaphor. It's like you're a different color, so you're beneath us. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine that they are. Um, just just by how they talk about uh, Kasai's warrior. And how she, he, uh, the brother said, she's your lesser. That sounds like a tiered caste system where, uh -huh. you know, there's mm -hmm. the royalty, there's the sub, you know, like the, the poor, the warriors, which are yeah. subclasses to you. And then there are, I guess, indentured servants who would be, I guess, the pink Cree. Maybe. And then the humans. But it definitely seems like they sold the pink Cree to other races. For a profit, because the collector had a couple of them. Yeah, social commentary. Yeah, Anna's a giant Nordic Viking chick. I kind of liked her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that she's like he was doesn't awesome. need money. He needs weapons. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then the the like the the Caesar guy was just like a. Uh, 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 what do they call him? Yeah, what do they call what do they call him? A emotional five year old or something like that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, I know what kind of guy he is. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that throws his money around, and when he doesn't get what he wants, he throws a temper tantrum and tries to throw more, more money at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's responsible. Yeah, um, it's a healthy. Can way we to talk? Yeah, can we talk about? The end of the episode. Absolutely, I called it. Did I not? Well, I we'll see if half of the thing I called is still true because we don't know. But, but, but Robin but, but is. But she's here. Earth. But she's here. Yeah, she's yes. here. That half I called. My other half what is happened? I think what she's happened to her? Deet's mom. What happened? What happened to her? Yeah, I was, I was thinking maybe she's Deke's mom. We might we might find that out. Um. She. I I mean it seems like she's. Uh, gotten control of her powers. I mean, she's had 80 years to do it, too. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so. so she's, she's yeah. clearly so, a lot more in control. Yeah. And she talks more. Yeah. Because she can control what she sees. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm definitely interested to see how she plays into all this. I think it'd be interesting if she was a villain. Um, okay, I want to know. Okay, so if if she is Deke's mom, has Deke gone through Terra Genesis or not? Because he was the last per he was the last child to be born on Earth. So no, he uh, was the last child to be child to be born born see, naturally. So yeah. when they took over, how old was he, and when did they start doing Terra Genesis? Did he get missed? Kind of thing. You know, know. did they like skip he? over him, and he did or somehow he didn't get it. He didn't get into the mist. Yes, so either, if he did, then he's either hiding his powers, or his powers are passive. Or mm -hmm. or maybe he just didn't get me. He's or maybe he didn't go through it. I'm not sure. I, I just think... Because yeah. if you go through Terra Genesis, these Inhumans anyway, it's obvious. Because mm -hmm. they form the cocoon, so it's obvious that they are... In humans, I guess maybe it could have been that he skipped the cocoon, like maybe. No, I'm not. not skipped. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe at the time when everyone, all this happened and stuff, he was old enough 
that they didn't even think about it or they weren't doing the teragenesis thing right away. So by the time they actually started doing it, he never went through it. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. It seems like they've been doing that for a long time. I don't know. Maybe somehow he weaseled his way out of it because he knew, maybe he knew he would change because of who his mom is and his daddy. And yeah, or his, his grandpa. His grandpapa. Grandpapa. Mm-hmm. He's dead. Well, yeah. But I'm just saying, maybe he... Because he's good at weaseling his way out, and his dad was still around. So maybe his dad somehow, you know, hid him from being in the churches. I don't know. It would be interesting to find out that he actually does have powers. He just doesn't want to use them. Well, he would have to hide them, you know, yep. in the situation that he's in now. So it does make sense. Yeah, it does make sense. I, I just don't see how he could really get away with that. Why can't you? Well, I think if he... To, to turn, you'd have to... Well, I'm just to... saying if he turned before they even knew. I don't know how. I don't, unless, don't they, know. unless they got a crystal and they did Terragenesis before he went through the ritual. Well, see, okay. See, okay. We don't know how old this has been going on, how long it's been going on. How, I mean, how long do Kree live? Are they a normal lifespan like human or longer than humans? But how much? I mean, all realistic privileges, Cassius and Deke look like they're around the same age. Um, so, I mean, if how long did Cassius come? How long ago did he end up there? You, there it all depends on the dates. On, and then when did they start going having the kids go through them? We know that they go through it when they're 18. Maybe when they came, Deke was over 18. And so they didn't even think about <clears throat> there's all there's a lot of there's a lot of things that could go into the reason why he didn't go through it. Or maybe he did go through it and he's been hiding it ever since because he went through it when he was younger with his mom. I don't know. I mean maybe that's why he didn't want to go through it because he knew he would change. He, there was a possibility of him changing. Well, that, I mean, I guess that does also hinge on who his mom is. Mm -hmm. And if the mom is even important. Yeah, he, if he is. know his dad's alive, if he's telling yes. the truth. Yes. Which he might not be. Which he might not be. You're absolutely she right. Be. I mean, we know she was an elder that knew about what happened. So. Mm -hmm. And she, well, you know, Robin's well, and we know that know. We know that she was, she was taken care of. Everyone thinks she was killed probably because she was taken down to the surface the of surface. the earth. But you can survive down there. We've yes. seen that. It's not it's not the best place to survive, but you can survive there. <laughs> may may totally can. Um, okay, next episode, episode eight, is called The Last Day. Coulson and the team discovered that the most unexpected person from Shield's past may hold the key to preventing Earth's destruction. <laughs> And I don't know if this is referring to Robin or another character that we haven't seen in a while. Um, from the looks of, of from some promo pictures, I think it's referring to Robin. But it says, unexpected person from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s past. So that implies that it's a bigger person than Robin. Because Robin wasn't that important before. Um, so I, so I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm excited to, I'm excited to see this new Robin um, and um, because I because I love I love clairvoyant characters yeah I want to um, see your, I want I want to okay we wanted the backstory of what happened with Fitz and they got taken I want to I want to know what her story is I mean there's a <laughs> lot of space in between we don't have and I'm hoping we get a little bit of it I'm not saying like you know all of it but that's some of it the important parts so, Yes, please. Yeah, and I'm still waiting to see, you know, where the fuck Bobby is, but you know, that, that's... But she's she on is on another spaceship. She's on a spaceship somewhere with Peter Griffin and, like, it's... Peter Griffin. Well, hi. It's actually pretty good. Um, <laughs> but I want her on the show. Yes. We got Hunter, though. We got Hunter. And I hope Hunter comes back. 
I don't think he's like okay. I, I haven't seen the like casting list for like any other episode that he's in, but I hope he comes back. But I mean, she might speak of him. Mm-hmm. She might because she he was supposed to be supposed to take care of her. I just like to I want I don't want to acknowledge that you know that these people existed. I miss them so much. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but with that, I think that has been our show, Rachel. Where can the people find you? They can find me at Twitter at VikingWitch76 and on Twitch at VikingWitch. Leo, where can people find you? They can find me at Cleomoto on social media somewhere. Yeah. Um, you can find me and all my giggles and gore and moshes and mayhem on YouTube at Jacob Salazar. You can find me on Twitter at tweeting me throughout the week about the life at Team Neverland. That is T-O-N-O-W-H-E-R-E-L-E-N-D. Join the Neverland Society. This has been the Gaz and I'm podcast for Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, here on the Twitch or if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, you can find all of us on ASFTV Podcast, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook, uh, Google Plus, MySpace, all those places. Um, Hotmail. Is, is that still a thing? <laughs> hotmail? I don't uh, we don't know. have a hotmail, but it is still a thing. <laughs> when I you see know, people that have a hotmail, I'm like, you still have one. <laughs> yeah, all those places. Go find us. You know how to use the internet. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night.